Nobody wants to get stranded. Last year, I ended up stranded in my boat in the middle of Lake Powell, having run out of gas. This year, I started taking precautions to avoid that happening again. Aside from gas, I was worried about the batteries running low on long trips, like a week at Lake Powell. It turns out my concerns were well-founded. While we did not end up stranded at Lake Powell, I forgot to charge the batteries when we returned and ended up stuck on our next outing. The batteries were too low to start the motor. I had wanted a portable solar charger for a while. The one I was looking at was a Sawaki 60 watt. While 60 watts is not a lot of power, the Sawaki fit my budget and would be enough power to charge the boat and other gadgets. I decided it was time to make the purchase. Having selected the charger, I began to design a system around this solar panel that would allow me to conveniently charge the boat. With the system now complete, I have been using it for several weeks. It is very easy to set up and keeps the batteries topped off and ready to go. The Swaki comes in a great kit. It includes the following connectors. A small 5.5mm DC to SAE connector. A set of SAE alligator clips to attach to a battery. A 5.5mm 1 meter long extension. A 5.5mm to 3.5mm 1 meter extension. A 5.5mm to DC accessory port, also commonly known as a cigarette lighter port. Common adapters for many laptops including Sony, IBM, Dell, Toshiba, HP, Acer, Asus, and Lenovo. I would strongly caution against directly charging any laptop or electronic device that does not use a USB charger. While this solar panel can be used to power some of these other devices, I strongly recommend that you use a battery and AC power inverter as part of the setup. While the panel is rated at 60 watts, which is enough to power many laptops, some require 90 watts or even 120 watts. Also, the 60 watt rating is for peak power in ideal conditions. Any dust or dirt on the panels, cloud in the sky, or other obstructions, or even the less than ideal angle will quickly degrade the output. Many devices will not deal well with being underpowered and it may cause damage to the device. This is not a flaw in the design of this solar panel, though including the various laptop adapters may have been a step too far. By using this panel with a battery bank and AC inverter, you can ensure that your device's factory charger is used, and the batteries, when fully charged, will supplement any underpower situation from the solar panel. The solar panel then can be left to charge the battery bank full time to keep its power topped off, even when you're not charging your device. You may still desire to directly charge your device, and I am not saying it will not work. In that case, ensure that your device requires no more than 60% of the maximum output, assuming that you will be using it in near ideal conditions. In the case of this 60 watt panel, that is 36 watts. If you will be using it on cloudy days, during the morning or evening hours, or in other subpar conditions, a safer assumption is no more than 20% of the rated output, or about 12 watts from a 60 watt panel. Assuming that your 60 watt laptop will run continually on a 60 watt rated solar panel, will at best be an exercise in frustration and may result in irreparable damage to your device. This is common to all solar chargers. The Sawaki uses sun power monocrystalline panels which keep the panels small without compromising power output. Cheaper polycrystalline panels would deliver less power or take more space. Monocrystalline panels also have the longest life often with a 25 year manufacturer warranty though I see no mention of warranty here. SunPower produces the highest efficiency solar panels on the US market today. Swalki claims this kit delivers 25% efficiency. Folded, the kit is 11.5 inches long, 6.5 inches wide, and almost 3 inches thick. It is about the size of a common hardback novel. Unfolded, it is just over 5 feet long, 11.5 inches wide, and less than 1 inch thick. The total weight is 3 pounds, making it light enough to carry in a heavy backpack. The USB output is limited to 5 volts at 2.1 amps and is driven by the Sawaki TIR-C technology, available in their portable power bricks. This is an intelligent charging chip that works to ensure a fast and safe charge. The chip provides overcharge protection, over discharge protection, surge current protection, surge voltage protection, overcurrent protection, short circuit protection, high temperature protection, a safe reset mechanism, reverse connection protection, 
and finally EMF protection. It will automatically detect your device and determine the optimal charging current and voltage to provide the fastest safe charge. Despite everything that is included, the kit has some limitations. Charging using the USB 5 volt output works great. However, the 12 volt to 18 volt DC output will require a charge management circuit. The voltage will vary wildly with the electrical load and position of the sun. I have measured a low of 12 volts to a high of more than 20 volts on the output, so make sure that whatever you attach can handle that variant. In order to charge a 12 volt marine battery, I needed a smart charging circuit that would bring the voltage to a safe charging value around 14.4 volts until the battery is charged and then drop the voltage until it settles around 13.3. Charging the battery to a voltage higher than this for more than a few hours will damage the battery. I found the Instapark 12 volt 5 amp waterproof PWM solar charge controller and it looks like it would do the job nicely. I had expected to pay more for a charge controller so was skeptical at first but this charge controller has done well and kept the battery conditioned and ready to run. Once I received the charge controller and solar panel, it was clear that the included cabling was too short. I initially used the included vehicle style alligator clips, but it was hard to access the batteries and attach the clips securely, and the connection was unreliable. More than once I came to the boat to find that the, one of the clips had come loose and charging had stopped. To solve the problem, I decided to order some cabling using standard SAE connectors. The charge controller already had an SAE connector on its output, so it made it easy to connect to the rest. First, I needed an SAE extension. I found one that was 15 feet long that looked good. I also wanted to use ring terminals to permanently attach to the batteries to eliminate the periodic disconnects and the need to crawl into the cubby where the batteries are stored. Finally, I needed an SAE Y splitter as I have two batteries and one charge connection. As long as the batteries are connected in parallel with positive to positive, negative to negative, and in good health, charging both at the same time is not an issue. Connecting it all up was a breeze. The ring connectors fit perfectly onto the battery posts and included fuses to protect the wires from unintended shorts or carrying more than expected power. Either is a real possibility. In fact, I blew both fuses on the first day. If the Y splitter is left connected, while only one battery in the boat is active, it is possible for the second battery to attempt to provide additional power to the boat across the small SEE cables and Y connector. Notice how large the cables are that provide power to the boat. This does not pose a risk to the boat's electrical circuits, but if the fuse were not present, the wire would overheat until it was glowing red and create a fire hazard, putting the boat at risk. I also wanted a way to use my existing AC-based LAN charger, a NOCO G3500 smart charger, while leveraging the SAE cabling. The NOCO has a proprietary connector, so I had to order a special adapter to connect the NOCO up to the SAE extension. Once that was in place, my previous charging tangle was significantly reduced, and I could charge during cloudy days or at night when the solar panel was not generating an adequate charge. With everything connected, the batteries are charged and ready to go boating, if I can get away from work.